While the rest of the U.S. may be struggling for work, there's currently a real boom of job offers for inmates in the country. Both state and some of the biggest private companies are now enjoying the fruits of a cheap and readily available workforce with tens of millions of dollars spent by private prisons to keep their jails full. Artis Gaynet Chikan takes up the story. In the U.S., the market for cheap labor is booming, behind bars. In the last 15 years, partnership between prisons and private manufacturers has increased significantly. They're becoming America's very own Chinese-style manufacturing line behind prison walls. Prisons, in fact, advertise themselves as such, as an alternative to outsourcing cheap labor to China or elsewhere. On the web, we came across this pitch that prisons prepared to persuade private sector companies to come and do business with them. Take a look. There is not enough uh, folks that will do this type of work in this country. So therefore, we're bringing, bringing back this industry that has historically has been going out of this country, and we're putting it you know, inside the walls. And it's, it's absolutely a, a perfect idea. I have a workforce that does not have car problems or babysitting problems, etc. They're always here, and they're always willing to come to work. Bring your business to our labor. A wide variety of industries take advantage of prison labor. Among many other things, prisoners make clothing, textiles, electronics, furniture, and even solar panels. Just as we're trying to get China to stop uh, with their prison labor, ours is at the same time increasing. Hundreds of companies have used prison labor directly or through subcontractors, including Microsoft, Boeing, Starbucks, Victoria's Secret, and others. They qualify for federal tax breaks. Uh, they can get uh, recompensated up to 40 percent of the wages that they pay to these inmates. We as taxpayers, we have to house, feed, and provide medical care and, and everything for all of these inmates. We do this as taxpayers. It comes out of the, the tax pools. And that keeps the actual prison workforce healthy and in shape to go out and perform these jobs for these private companies. Hard working and reliable, inmates show up for work every day voluntarily. Work in prison is mandatory, and the choice many inmates have is whether to work for a government-run prison industry for less than a dollar an hour, or a private one for a minimum wage of around six dollars. Unicor is a government-owned corporation that uses prison labor to produce all kinds of goods, mainly for other government agencies. 175 different types of products and services. You see the variety listed on their website. They, too, partner up with private firms now. Last year, Unicor's revenue reached $900 million. As far as private prisons are concerned, two of the country's biggest prison corporations made $3.3 billion last year alone. Private prisons are traded on the New York Stock Exchange. They are for-profit companies. And the uh, savings that they reap from using inmate labor um, go to their bottom line. It's money they otherwise don't have to spend in order to keep a facility running. Large prison populations and harsh sentences result in greater profits. America's three major private prison companies spend around $45 million over the past 10 years on lobbying state and federal governments for supporting immigrant detention, mandatory minimum sentences, three strikes laws, and other legislative measures that contribute to the growth of America's gigantic prison population. The U.S. now holds more people behind bars than any other nation, more than two million. That's one quarter of all prisoners in the world. From a cost-effectiveness point of view, the $45 million that private prisons have reportedly spent over the past decade lobbying to keep prisons full is peanuts compared to the billions that they make every year. One can argue about the many causes and effects of America's skyrocketing incarceration rate. But since prisons became a for-profit industry in the U.S. 30 years ago, the number of prisoners has gone up dramatically. Not to say that it was the only cause behind the spike, but many argue it was part of it. And now with the cheap labor market expanding behind American bars, one is wondering whether the justice system in the U.S. is adopting market values. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Shekhan.